Boom. Okay. We are live for another episode of the Marketers Roundtable. So today we got Scott Wising. Wissing, man. Wissing, <laughs> Wissing, Wissing. <laughs> All right, we got Scott Wissing. So quick little story. So I remember I met Scott. Um, he started an agency or an agency coaching program with Gustin and uh, I can't remember the other guy. Pedro. Uh, Pedro, Pedro. And then um, I commented. I was like, who are these guys? And then Scott was like, that's my favorite comment of the day. Uh, and then I, I followed him after that. And you got some really cool stuff going on with agency um, IO. Like, I, lo I love the branding. Um, and I think you started like another brand, which is part of the yeah. same company, um, Pod Smash that IO. So, you know, I feel like there's this little like internet community where we all kind of like follow each other and we all kind of watch each other. And, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize maybe that you really saw some of my content because you oh, were yeah. like, uh, you, you know, you, you said that uh, I know you're big on collaboration. So I was like, oh, so he's been watching me. <laughs> so so oh, I'm super excited for this interview. Um, so I'm going to let Scott inter introduce himself. But um, just from the information he gave me, um, just in the past two years, uh, you started three six-figure businesses. Um, and I'm not really too sure about what those are, but we'll talk about <laughs> that. And then we're going to be talking about uh, just content marketing, uh, video, and funnels. So, Scott, if you... Um, you know, I meet you in person for the first time or something, and I'm, I, I say, like, what do you do? How do you introduce yourself? Yeah, that's uh, a <laughs> that's funny. And thanks for the, the, you know, the kind of the introduction there. But, yeah. you know, it's I started out my journey about three years ago where I was, you know, I was a I was a middle school teacher. I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. I was a basketball coach. But I had always been doing, you know, some sort of side gig where it was like, you know, I learned how to, I learned how to do web design on my own, or I, you know, I started this little business and, mm -hmm. and I felt like, you know, even though I love teaching and coaching, like the, the passion or, you know, I, I think that word's a little overused, but the, mm -hmm. the piece that was always was calling me was, you know, getting into entrepreneurship. Cause I just wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to feel like I built something that was mine and it just kept pulling me and pulling me. And so, you know, just before COVID hit actually, so, you know, just like, basically two years ago, I decided to leave teaching and come full time online. I really had no idea what the hell I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was just I was just feeling my way through it. And, you know, just stumbled on a couple different ideas in the world of, you know, funnels. I found click funnels. I, I liked the way that that felt. I had been designing in WordPress previously. And I was like, you know what, these click funnels designs are horrible. Like mm -hmm. the, a lot of this stuff is really bad. And so I just kind of figured out how to turn, you know, ClickFunnels designs into something that actually functioned mm -hmm. and felt more like a well-designed website. And that was kind of like my start. I started a YouTube channel with no idea what I was doing, like I said, and started to get some hits mm -hmm. and ended up landing my first few clients there and began the the agency journey, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. Right. But essentially, you know, it was it was a lot of stress, a lot of, of scary times, you know, mm -hmm. not, uh, not knowing if anything was going to work, but mm -hmm. you know, you just, you just make it through. And I did that on my own for about 10 months. And then I met my business partner, Julian, and we kind of, you know, had this brainchild where we wanted a business mm -hmm. that was able to solve our own problems. And then we just go out and solve other people's problems. And that's kind of where the whole, you know, three business thing came about. So we mm -hmm. do a few different things now, a few different right. things now. Right. So there's, there's a lot to unpack. So you talked about YouTube, which I want to uh, talk about a little. Um, you talked about having a business partner, which I also want to talk about. And you talk about, you know, starting a business after quitting a job and being stressed. So uh, let, let's talk about the first, like, I guess, 12 months, right, of like quitting your job and then like uh, starting an agency. What, what did that look like? Uh, it looked like some nights I just wanted to cry myself to sleep because, uh, you know, you just... I think that's the I think that's the biggest misconception about entrepreneurship is people mm -hmm. the the internet paints a really, you mm -hmm. know, high quality picture about entrepreneurship. Yeah. But when you're in it and you're actually going through it and it's mm -hmm. yours and there's and there's nobody else there to save you, it's a it's a lot of you know, it's basically you're solving a, a new problem pretty much every hour mm -hmm. of the day. And mm -hmm. it's just a constant constant battle with that. And, you know, I, it took me a long time to get to the point where I was like, okay, if I don't make a thousand dollars today, I'm, I'm going to be okay. Like my mm -hmm. life is, is going to be okay. And there's right, things right. that there's things we're building 
that might take us, you know, six, 12 months, but you need to really focus that these are the important steps to take to get there mm -hmm. rather than just always thinking, you know, I got to make money. I got to make money. Mm -hmm. So that was a big shift for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I was like, you know, having a uh, conversation with someone in the comments about how um, people have a misconception around marketing where they think it's always supposed to like drive a sale immediately when, um, you know, marketing is about both like branding and have doing a little bit of direct response on um, where you are asking people for like, you know, to comment so you could get book a call or whatever. Um, so, it, yeah, it's like it's, it's a mix between both. And I like what you said, where it's like you do have to um, think about the next six, 12 months rather than today. Um, because that's just, I always say marketing is the, uh, the right person seeing the right message at the right time. So <laughs> I was having a conversation with my uh, business partner. He'd been doing insurance recently and he, he's doing, he's, uh, working his Facebook profile to get insurance, um, uh, contracts and he'll, you know, he'll, people will like watch him for some time. Right. And like a month later they'll hit him up. But like, imagine if he just gave up maybe the first like month, he wasn't really getting so much traction. And it's like, pe people are watching. People are definitely watching. <laughs> yeah, you right. know, you know that better than anybody. Like it's, mm -hmm. you know, you and I have kind of a similar style where it's, you know, bits and pieces throughout the day. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have like, I have a content calendar, but that has like maybe one pillar piece of content and then like some mm -hmm. other posts. But I think the cool thing about being an entrepreneur and living in content marketing is basically mm -hmm. like if you see something or you feel something like just put it out because mm -hmm. the the worst thing that can happen is you don't and then you know like you said that person that saw that one post that mm -hmm. came back to you a month later mm -hmm. maybe doesn't see anything and so i think there's a very fine balance between like the gary v style where it's like mm -hmm. you have to put out this content mm -hmm. and like what feels right and if I put out seven pieces of content today and only two tomorrow, like that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because I felt on that one day that those right. certain pieces, you know, resonated with me. I think that's the coolest part about content marketing for sure. Mm -hmm. So with, with your agency, do you ever have to like talk to people? I know, I know you help, uh, you do agency coaching with funnel designers. Yeah. Um, and then you also have a done for you service. So do you ever have to like, like, coach people on like how to create content because you know i have clients too when we have to like coach them on how to create clients uh, content they overthink it it's like you know like what, what do you tell people who are, who are overthinking it and how do you go about that yeah absolutely so our our newest our newest offer which you know just for the breakdown like our mm -hmm. our businesses are we have agency which is our agency it's just a play on words that's the name right. of our business so everything inside of our business kind of falls as an offer under our digital marketing agency. And mm -hmm. so our umbrella agency does, you know, website design and funnels and, and traffic and all of these things. Mm -hmm. But our newest offer is strictly in the content marketing arena. And so mm -hmm. basically what we do is we help people who are creating long form content like podcasters, YouTubers, coaches, consultants. We help them take what they've already made mm -hmm. and then turn it into short form content. Mm -hmm. And we've found an interesting thing here where a podcaster who maybe does two episodes a week and is always on mic and is always comfortable speaking to people doesn't feel comfortable like getting in front of a camera for 30 seconds and shooting a reel. Mm. But the problem there is the way that people are consuming content right now is very short bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. And so where their podcast might have performed really well, like five years ago, they're not finding as much traction there. And so our job is to help them get short form content. And so to answer your question about coaching, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of like taking what they have and making it work. But then mm -hmm. some people come to us and they're like, hey, you know what? On top of these podcasts, I want to do kind of like what you do. I want to sit in front of the camera mm -hmm. and just answer like 10 or 12 questions and then turn it into pieces of content. Mm -hmm. And so then that's where our coaching comes in. It's like, okay, you know, here's what we got to do. We got to do some market research. Mm -hmm. We got to understand, you know, what your audience wants to hear. And then all you have to do is just present it in a way where it feels like you're just naturally talking to someone kind of like mm -hmm. we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we do, we do a lot of that kind of like bits and pieces of coaching, but you know, don't over, we always tell them don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at Alex Hermosi's stuff and you look at Gary Vee's stuff, like it's not some scripted, you know, mm -hmm. piece of, content that's earth shattering it's just <laughs> here's, what, 
it's here's what I'm thinking in the moment. Right. And it's relevant to my audience. So I'm just going to mm. go post it. And that's pretty much how content is working right now. Mm. And I feel like it's super easy for them to create content because they just, they just, they live it. Like, I mean, that, that stuff, they, um, it, it's not hard for them to talk about that stuff. It's not like they're forcing it, it forcing no. it. It's like people have questions and then they, they're able to answer it from experience and people listen because they have results too. Exactly. And I think that's, you know, that's the key. And like, I, I threw up a video the other day and it's, I don't know, sorry if anybody's offended if I cuss, but I basically have a, a theory, you know, it's like, just do shit right. and then talk about the shit that you've done. Mm -hmm. And then Literally. there's, there's, <laughs> there's no way for anybody to be like, well, no, like yeah. that doesn't, it's like, well, I did it. Like, this yeah. is what I've done and this is what's worked. I'm not sitting here saying, you know, go out and run a million dollars of Facebook ads. But mm -hmm. when I look at my business, I don't do that. Like all <laughs> I ever do is talk about the things that I've done. And so right. you're not going to please everyone. Like 1% mm -hmm. to maybe 2% of the people who see your content are really mm -hmm. going to resonate with it. Right, and right. that's all you're, that's all you're trying to do. You're just trying mm -hmm. to find those people with your message. And then you just right. keep putting out more of what you're doing to those kinds of people. And it just continues to spiral. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So now I actually want to talk about how you get your clients because I know um I know you and Gustin had this little podcast um about inbound and outbound and I, I'm all, I'm like an inbound guy like I don't I don't like you ask me about how to do cold email I I don't know <laughs> so like I, I know you do a little bit of that so like how, how do you how, I know you also have a YouTube channel so let, let's talk about like how all that like generates you traffic. Yeah, so like the the word we use a lot is like an ecosystem. I'm definitely. I'm from the school of thought that you can do multiple things. Like mm -hmm. I'm never going to come out and be like, only do this or only do that. Like there's, right. there's multiple ways to do things. But I think like, you know, with my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. that's a place where I can put a piece of long form content that has a lot of educational material in it. So someone can literally spend 20 to 30 minutes, kind of like a course mm -hmm. watching what I'm doing. And then in the description, I'll link, you know, a, a lead magnet or something that leads to purchase one of my courses. And mm -hmm. so that's always really powerful in terms of, you know, things that are already built. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily using YouTube all the time to get our front facing like agency clients. Mm -hmm. The way that we do that is through content marketing and outbound. And so we have a combination of, yeah, I'm going to post some content every day. I'm going to have conversations with people through my content. Mm -hmm. But every single day, we're also doing outbound. So we we really leaned into cold email and LinkedIn automation. Mm -hmm. And so with those two things, we're able to send, you know, 250 to 300 messages directly to our target audience. Mm -hmm with a response rate of like 10%. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if we can get 15 leads every day that are in our pipeline now, now it's just a process of how many times can you follow up? Mm -hmm. How many times, you know, can you talk to them, book a meeting and then and get on the phone with them? And so that's kind of our internal process. We don't do a lot of ads. Mm -hmm. We don't do any ads right now, to be honest with you. We used to do more Facebook ads, but everything we do is either content marketing or through outbound outbound messaging. Mm -hmm. So with, with the outbound, uh, like what, what does that look like? Like what does the, the uh, technology stack look like when you are sending a message? Like what, what does the message look like? Um, Cause I, we, we all kind of um, get like cold DMs and I think, you know, right. most people ignore the, the majority of them. So how do you make it work? So I think what we've found is really like, I used to be under the school of like, okay, reach out to somebody, you know, ask them how their day is doing. And like, <laughs> and then I, just, you know, like, you get to a point where that happens enough to you where you're mm -hmm. like, you know what? Like, I don't have time to talk to 15 people about my personal life. and <laughs> my Like th the question that I always thought was funny is like, what are your quarterly MRR goals? And it's like, yeah. you don't even, you have no, like you looked at my website for 10 seconds and you yeah. came in and asked me that question. Like you have no idea what I'm doing. And so we went to a strategy that basically uses, it's kind of like a three piece breakdown. It's mm -hmm. personalized opener. So something to do with you. I'm either going to check out your website, your podcast, something to do with you to pick up like one small piece of something that's going on. Mm -hmm. So that's part number one. So we have personalized opener and then we have a hook. And so our hook is essentially, we find the biggest problem that that person is having that mm -hmm. our solution can solve. Mm -hmm. And we, we offer it in front of them. So an example would be like, 
Hey, Desmond, how's it going? You know, I just checked out Funnel Utopia. Love what you're doing. You know, usually we'd be more specific. Right. But then I'd say, you know, we help people like you or whatever your niche is. Like we help funnel creators, you know, get more visibility by putting your content in front of 10,000 people every month. Mm. Is this something you would be interested in? Mm. And And then all we do is we end it with, if yes, then shoot us back a yes or a quick reply. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that people liked how direct we were without being like, you know, we're going to solve all your problems and make you a million dollars immediately. It's just like, yeah, that'd be cool to get in front of 10,000 people each month. Like, mm -hmm. I want to learn more about this. Yeah. And so we lead with that kind of messaging. And we do that across all platforms. We mm -hmm. do that across LinkedIn, cold email, Facebook, and Honestly, it converts about the same on each platform. Cold email is is kind of our, our number one right now. Mm. But basically, all we're trying to do is generate a positive response. Because once that person says, yes, I'm interested, mm -hmm. now you have their attention. And now you can respond with like a folder of examples of what you've done. And then you mm -hmm. continue the conversation. And, in, in, you know, the ultimate goal is to book a call. And if you get mm -hmm. that person on the phone... That's where, you know, one of our biggest KPIs is. It's like, how many calls can we have? Because mm -hmm. if we know we close at 30%, if I can get 20 calls this week, that's X amount of revenue. And I can really base what my business is doing around mm -hmm. those numbers. And so that's mm -hmm. why we kind of like that, that cold messaging situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just, and just hearing it, like, it, it sounds good. Like I, for the right person, um, they, they would definitely, I can see how like somebody would actually stop and, uh, I give you that positive response. So um, how are you doing this at scale though? Cause if it's personalized, like, and you're sending whatever, like a, a few hundred messages, how are you doing that at scale? Like, is it manual or automated? So it's a combination of both. So, you know, the, the long or the short is basically, we have, we have a VA mm -hmm. who works, who works all day for us. And basically what he does is he, he matches up data. And so like, mm -hmm. I don't want this to get like super technical, but basically what we do is we use a software called LinkedIn Sales Navigator, which is okay. basically like an open, you know, arena of all the information you need on businesses out there. Wow. And then we take an email scraper and we scrape emails. So we'll go into LinkedIn Sales Nav, we'll do a search for, let's say like business coach, and it'll come up with like a million results. And then we'll start to filter that down. So we'll say we want him to be in America, and then we want him to have one to three employees, and we want him to be doing a hundred to a million a year. And so we filter mm -hmm. it down, until we get a, like a, a good sample size, like 10,000 to 15,000 people. Mm -hmm. And then we use an email scraper, which is a really simple, you know, software you can get for like 20 or 30 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And you scrape all these emails. And so what it does is the email that they signed up for on LinkedIn registers in this Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And so our VA, then this is where the manual part comes in. Our VA goes in and he looks at that data and then he goes and he says, OK, I'm going to find this person's website or this person's podcast. And I'm going to make sure that this is the right person we want to be talking to. And so he's just matching. He's matching like website to person. And mm -hmm. so we have like that proper data that we need. Mm -hmm. And so then what we can do is let's say you have a spreadsheet. Like I said, I'm getting pretty technical here. But mm -hmm. let's say you have a spreadsheet that has like first name and then like podcast name and email. Mm -hmm. We can take that spreadsheet and import it into a software that pulls that information out and mm -hmm. puts it into an email. And so now all we have to do is say, okay, we want you to put the first name here, the podcast name here, and then close it again with the first name. And so now when that person reads the email, it's like, hey, Desmond, I saw Funnel Utopia or whatever it is, you know, or, you know, whatever the podcast name is. And so you feel like we've personalized that to you. Mm -hmm. Like, did we go in and write, you know, a paragraph worth of information on everyone? No, right. we just personalized it with something. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the process that we use. And so we're able to get, you know, a large amount of data. I mean, we have a database of like over 2 million people now that fit wow. our target audience. And so each day we just go in and we say, okay, we're going to take these 200. Mm -hmm. We're going to put these into an email and then we're going to take these 50 and we're going to send LinkedIn messages to these 50. And so that's kind of the process we use. Mm -hmm. Now, how long did it take you to set up a process like that? We actually jumped in pretty much head first really quickly. Mm -hmm. Like I, um, I follow, I follow very few people that I see as like mentors mm -hmm. because what I found was early on in my journey, I was following everyone and then mm -hmm. I'm getting like a thousand different ideas. Mm -hmm. And so, so 
now what I do is I'll just find like, this is the person I like for cold email. This is the mm -hmm. person I like for story branding. And I just follow those people. Right. And so the guy that I follow for cold email, and I'll give him a plug, his name's Connor Robertson. He's amazing. His business is, is called Syntax and they're phenomenal. And so I followed a lot of his instructions basically from his free Facebook group and took all mm -hmm. the information from there. And then my partner, Julian, and I just started to piece this stuff together. And we were like, mm -hmm. okay, we need to find these people through LinkedIn sales nav, we need to find their podcast name or their website name. And then we need to use this software, which is called GMAS, mm -hmm. which basically allows you to take information from a spreadsheet into an email and then send it out. Mm -hmm. And, and that's pretty much what we do. We get lots of responses of people that are like, I'm not interested or don't message me again, yeah. but you know, that's, that's part of the game. Mm -hmm. Like, but we do like our numbers right now are 10% positive response. And so mm -hmm. 10 out of every hundred people we talk to say, yes, send me more information. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at that, like from a scale point, like if we're sending 200 emails a day and 20 of them are saying, yes, mm -hmm. what could happen if we could, you know, send 2000 or mm -hmm. send 5,000. And so that's kind of how we look at it. We're not rushing anything right now. Cause we don't want to overdo it. Cause we don't mm -hmm. even have the ability to fulfill like a hundred clients a right. month right, right now. Right, right. But for now it's, it's, you know, it's a process that works for us and then we'll just scale it slowly as we go here. Mm -hmm. And I like how you said it, it's part of the game. Um, because like, let's say you you're sending traffic to like a website, you get whatever a hundred visitors and only 30% um, of them convert. So 70 people essentially told, you no. Right. Right. So uh, rejection is, is part of the game. And so um, I like that you, you said that now when you're are you sending traffic straight to a calendar um, or are you sending them to your website? Because I know I, I saw your story and you said that you use the 60 second VSL and that works better than uh, uh, a longer one. Yeah. So we have for our new offer, which is called Snacked, basically mm -hmm. Snacked is a play on words that we take long form turned into short form content. Mm -hmm. And so. When we have, we have our snack landing page. So if mm -hmm. anybody finds us organically, they're going to go to our traditional landing page and, you know, building funnels for two years, like I kind of have like the optimization of things figured out. And so I set it up in a way that's going to be optimized to cold traffic. Mm -hmm. So originally with our cold email campaigns, we were sending positive response people directly to that landing page. And we found that we were converting booked calls at about 7%. Mm -hmm. And so we looked at that and we were like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Like we're getting all this interest and then mm -hmm. we're sending them to this landing page and we're only getting seven out of every hundred to book a call. Like right. there's gotta be something better there. And so as we looked at the data, we understood that most people were getting lost in the middle of that page. Like they would watch the VSL mm -hmm. and then they would start reading through the middle of the page. And somewhere in there, we were losing them because our mm -hmm. call booking was all the way at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my theory in business and in life, like the, the first thing when I adjust things is like, what can I eliminate? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so we just essentially took the middle of that page and deleted it. And mm -hmm. so all that was left was our 90 second VSL next to our calendar. And basically right. we put step one, watch this video, mm -hmm. step two, book this call. And mm -hmm. literally overnight, it went from 7% to like 31% that were booking mm -hmm. calls. Mm -hmm. And so that was really interesting for me because... I build call booking funnels for, for mm -hmm. clients. Like mm -hmm. I built multiple call booking funnels and we always use that traditional format. But what we found is if people show interest already, mm -hmm. you don't need to send them to that, that long page. You send mm -hmm. them somewhere more direct and that ended up converting a lot better for us. Mm -hmm. I might have to try that because I'm having a client with that exact same problem. And I even made a post about it. Like, there's no reason you need to be taking people through hoops to buy from you. Like no. if, if they want to buy, like, why are you doing Like, why are you taking them to a five step page? So um, I, I definitely, I definitely need to try that. That's why I like to do these interviews. It's like uh, free, free coaching. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. No, no, it's, it's it, honestly, dude, it's, this is, you hear me talk about this all the time. Like mm. I, I don't care about anything out there unless I have data. On data. It. Like data, yeah. people can, people can make all these claims about, you know, this Facebook ad or this type of messaging. And it's like, what you do literally matters zero to me <laughs> until I've tested it in my own business with my own audience. It, it, and that's the hard part for me about courses. Like I love mm. creating courses, but 
I'm inherently going to be different than everything that you do. And so mm -hmm. if I convert at 30% and then you go out and do the same thing and you're like, but mine's only converting at 3%, you lied mm -hmm. to me. And it's like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't control what your audience does. I can only right. give you like best practice. So it's mm -hmm. just like test, test, test as much as you possibly can and get that data. Right, right. So um, we, we talked about the three uh, businesses, but we never really went into, I want to talk about like more so like building an agency and not just like marketing and sales soon. But like we, we, we never really talked too much about the businesses. So what, like what were the three different businesses? Yeah. So, I mean, originally when I started, I was a solopreneur, just okay. strictly building funnels for people. I would literally spend my day, you know, posting in Facebook groups and, and doing YouTube videos mm -hmm. and getting clients from there. And so that funnel design, you know, solar solopreneurship was was business number one. And so okay. that's when I ended up teaming up with Julian and we formed our agency called Agency. And so that, like I said, was like business number one right there was essentially like funnels and a small amount of marketing. Mm -hmm. And so from there, Goose and Pedro and I formed Funnel Agency Lab, which you know, we were able to, to, and I don't really like to talk about like numbers, you know, because mm. I'm more concerned with my, our students result. But I mean, we were able exactly. to do, yeah, we were able to do over a hundred thousand in sales pretty quickly just because mm. of our audiences. Like mm -hmm. Gustin, obviously, you know, mm. works for click funnels, like he, he has a lot of stuff already out there. Mm. And so we were able to just combine our, our forces from my YouTube channel, Pedro's YouTube channel and coaching, and then Gustin stuff. And we really were able to say, okay, let's launch this thing. And we got, you know, 15 clients in that coaching business almost overnight. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to take that from 15. And I think right now we have 26 or 27 students in Funnel Agency Lab. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people glorify that. They're like, oh, that's, you know, but, you know, between the three of us and like we're spending a lot of time, we're more focused on like building out like the we're testing and seeing what works best for students and, you know, how can we get better results? But that's inherently business number two. And then business number three, there's a huge asterisk here with that six figures because our run rate right now is, is six figures, but we've only been operating snacked for two months now. Mm -hmm. And so we have our funnel agency, we have our funnel agency lab coaching program, and then now snacked, which is our content marketing offer is kind of like our third piece of a business. Mm -hmm. Now you talk to me in six months is yeah, it'll be over six figures for sure because of what we've set up here in the beginning. But I want everyone to know, like, it's not like we have, you know, millions of, you know, it's not like money's just like flowing in, like mm -hmm. building a business and building even a, a new offer mm -hmm. takes so much work and mm -hmm. we're spending about as much as we're making right now, mm -hmm. like to get everything where we want it to be. And so I always like people to, you know, I want to be really transparent mm -hmm. that there's a lot more that goes into it than just like, you know, money coming in and nothing yeah. going out. So, yeah. And, that, and that's what this podcast is about. Like literally, um, uh, you know, fun of utopia, like the idea behind the name, um, is, you know, there's like a dystopian marketing community out there where everyone's kind of like not really transparent. It's like, hey, I made 100K in revenue or like everyone's a first 100K a month guru. Um, you know, they'll say they made 100K in revenue, but didn't even collect the cash. It's like there's a lot of like it for for people getting in is just uh, misleading. And it can be depressing, too, when you're not getting the results you want um, because you keep buying these courses and keep buying into dreams. Dude, it's so you you hit it on the head there. Like that's why I love talking. I knew we were gonna have a good conversation just because <laughs> I just I I stopped giving a shit about anybody that that wasn't transparent. Like if mm. you and once again I made a post about this the other day. Like if you don't show me your process mm. along with your outcome, like mm. I'm not even gonna give you the time of day because right. anyone on the internet right now, like I could come out right now and be like, oh, snacked a million dollar business. Like, <laughs> Nobody knows, like right. I, I can say whatever I want, but when you look at like the actual details of the business, I'm more concerned with, you know, did we launch the business without mm -hmm. spending a bunch of assets? Like, mm -hmm. did we get our first client profitably? Like those are things that, that I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't think about. They're always like, well, how do I get to 10 K a month? How do I get to 20 K a month? And it's like, you need an offer first that gets one person to pay you what you want to pay them before you can think about anything else down the road. And so with Snacked, like, and I, I hope people are following that, like it's our content marketing offer. Mm -hmm. What we did was we launched it from what's called a Google doc offer. We literally 
Julia and I sat down and we were like, we have this idea. Mm -hmm. A lot of our clients want content creation to drive traffic. Mm -hmm. So let's start giving it to them. And so we had this idea. We put it in a Google Doc. We literally laid out like, here's what the name is. Here's a short synopsis of it. And then here's a 90 second VSL. Mm -hmm. And we just started messaging people. We were like, let's go find some podcasters. Let's go find some coaches and let's send it to them. Mm -hmm. And within the first three weeks of doing that, we landed four clients. Mm -hmm. And wow. with, with the offer that it was at the time, we were charging $5.99 a month. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not like a big amount of a sum of money, but think right. about that. Like we went from nothing. We didn't have any expenses to mm -hmm. four clients who were paying us $5.99 a month. And that's monthly recurring revenue. So within a couple of weeks, we were at, you know, $22,000 worth of recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. And then after another month, we were over $5,000 recurring revenue. And this was all within like a month. Mm -hmm. And so I think we we actually took a lot of pride in that. A lot of people would look in and be like, you're only making this. And it's like, that was a out of thin air. Like, yeah, literally, thin, literally, thin literally, literally. Yeah. And so that process, which we call offer validation is huge to us because that was what allowed us to say, you know what? Like we hit 5k MRR mm -hmm. and now people are telling us exactly what they love and don't love about this product. So we have money to use to now go build a team. And so that's what we did. We took that recurring revenue. And in the second month, we put it towards hiring video editors, hiring social media managers, like getting a team set up. And so now with our business, you know, our expenses and our profit right now are pretty close to about equal. But in six months from now, it's going to start to level off where we get more clients, more monthly recurring revenue, but we aren't having to add as much expenses into our business. And I think that process right there is so valuable for people to learn, especially when they're starting out. You're not going to just go from zero to 20K months, like without this kind of growth period. And if people are telling you you are, you should probably run the other way. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh, like it's funny you mentioned that because how, how I break it down to people is I, this is why I created a, a program, a, just a, a low ticket program called the 100K case study, because I always tell people um, generate cash first, build your business later. So the first thing you should do is you create this offer which you literally create out of thin air right. right you get someone to pay for uh pay for it first um and what this also does is it gives you the foundation of how you actually make money in a business because um if you can't make money without uh money you can't make money with money right no. so all, everything you talked about like is the, the three high income skills i essentially talked about offer creation right um you you always have to do sales obviously if that's some sales process and then marketing right and you know you talked about this google doc which was a uh, part which was essentially your uh sales process and that's essentially how we started our uh, agency expert funnel incubator from a facebook group to a calendar to a um a zoom to a google doc to get uh you know uh, paid and everything so um, I, I love that you talked about that. Now, how, how do you balance having uh, so uh, you only have two offers, I guess, in your agency, right? Yeah, so yeah, now it's two. yeah, now it's more streamlined. Like, we and to be honest, like, we're only really marketing hard mm -hmm. our new content creation offer. Like, our yeah. our funnel building and marketing offer is always on the back end, but mm -hmm. but that's coming more from like referrals. And mm -hmm. so, you know, every month we get a couple clients who have used us in the past or somebody referred us and we. You know, we build out their funnel or we do their marketing and that's supplemental income so that we can we can really drive this new offer because we're seeing that, you know, I love funnels and I, I love marketing on that side of things. But for us as a business, like we see the opportunity right now oh, yeah. with the way that short form content is mm -hmm. to really get in here and solve a problem that a lot of people who are already in our niche have mm -hmm. and that is relatively low friction. Mm -hmm. Like when you think about building funnels or doing someone's marketing, you're essentially building their business. Like you literally, <laughs> you, you are, you are going in and building their business. Yeah. And so with the content marketing piece, it's kind of, it's kind of unique. And I don't mm -hmm. want to say like, it's not performance driven, but a lot of times the content itself is the performance marker. And mm -hmm. so it's like, if we can teach someone and help them get 25 pieces of video content for the next month or two that in itself like is the performance marker and so people are are coming to us and they're like man i just i want and need more content and so for us it's just like okay what what goes into that 
market Ooh. research, understanding how to, you know, coach them a little bit on video mm -hmm. and then having a video editing team who can turn these pieces of content into something that looks and feels good to go on to reels, TikTok or YouTube shorts. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to do that at scale because the only thing that really needs to change there is we add more people. We add more video editors, we add more this because on the back end, there's not a lot of like performance metric to worry about. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that, and that's why we were so excited about it because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hard to build a business, even mm -hmm. your own business, let alone building 20 other people's businesses exactly. at the same time. So that's kind of why we're really intrigued by this content offer. Mm -hmm. And I, I definitely, um, I mean, I'm excited about it because I, I saw some dude on um, the dude I'm going to be working with. I, I saw, I came across his profile and he was like, I can help you create. It was some, something similar, like or whatever, 25 pieces of content within just 60 minutes. He did it for one of my clients that came out super well. And for the right person who sees it, it's kind of like a no brainer. It's like, if you know, like the sort of um, reach that uh, those short pieces of content are getting on TikTok, um, it, it's a no brainer. And you can repurpose it to Facebook. You can repurpose it to Instagram and it's all native to the platform too. Right. It's like, those pieces of content are performing well again uh, across all platforms. Even uh, YouTube has it now too. Yep. Um, so just like with the, with those one those twenty five pieces of content, you can put it across all those platforms. So I, I think you definitely have something with it. Yeah, and it's that that offer that you just talked about is very much you know what we're exploring right now because we started out as you know repurposing. And then mm -hmm. we found that people want original content too. And mm -hmm. so we actually are doing that exact offer that you just said there, where it's like, we come in to your business or your solopreneurship. We do all the market research for you in your niche. Mm -hmm. And we find like a list of 30 to 40 questions that your mm -hmm. audience really wants to hear. And then basically we join you, you know, virtually and basically do like a faux podcast mm -hmm. and we teach you the setup that you need for your camera and, you know, how to do this mm -hmm. so that all you have to do after that hour, hour and a half is done is drop mm -hmm. us all your content. Mm -hmm. And then our video editing team will go in and turn all these little pieces mm -hmm. into reels, TikToks, YouTube shorts, everything that you need. And like you said, it's like an hour of work mm -hmm. for like a month's worth of content. And then... Mm -hmm the people that find the value in that will come back the next month as well. They're like, I need more content. Like, mm -hmm. let's just do this again. And so that's where for us, the scalability happens because then we can hire someone to do the interviews. Mm -hmm. Then we hire more video editors. And so then we can just place people. And if we have 50 clients, that's manageable for us. Mm -hmm. Like that's manageable to do those things each month. And so the only piece there is will short form content continue to be as popular as it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know the question, the answer to that, but I guarantee it for at least the next two or three years, it will be. And so that's kind of the wave that we'll, we'll ride out here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now I want to talk a little bit more about um, your building, building a team, because like, I also like to always say like a business, like I, I tell people I'm not an agency coach, right? I'm like, I'm a marketer. So um, cause there's like, there's more to building a business than just marketing and sales, building a team, accounting, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So as far as, um, building a team, like how, how big is your team now? And like, what, what, uh, when you're building a business, well, yeah, let's just talk about your current team. How big is that team? Our current team, we don't have any employees. It's mm -hmm. Julian and myself. We're 50, 50 owners in the mm -hmm. business. And then we have, so I, I guess technically you could call them VA. So we have one VA that does our data. Mm -hmm. And then we have two more VAs who are part of the same team mm -hmm. that do uh, social media posting and some client management on social media for us. Mm -hmm. So that's really like our only like direct team that we're working with like every day. Mm -hmm. And then you have your, your video editors. And so we have a couple dedicated video editors who are basically on call anytime mm -hmm. we need them. And then... To top it off, we also have a video editing subscription where we pay a certain monthly and then we can just drop whatever we want in there and they video edit for us. Mm. And so essentially, when you look at it, like in a whole scope of things, it's like seven total people. But those are all like kind of subcontractors between oh, right. Julian and myself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of people would look at that and be like, oh, you're a vet video editing service, but you use another service. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Like, if, mm -hmm. And I think that's where we can be more resourceful. It's like. If there's a quality product out there that already exists that does exactly what you need it to do, like sometimes it's better to save yourself the hassle from hiring in-house and just mm -hmm. use them 
until you get enough revenue to where you can have the time and resources to to bring in house. Mm -hmm. And so we're very much we're just resourceful about about what we do as long as things are high quality. So that's kind of like how our team operates right now. All right. And uh, just some closing questions. Uh, I think you got an interview at 12. So I, I could talk and talk for two no, hours. I, right? I mean, I can I can go for No, I don't have another one until later this afternoon. So I mean, okay, I mean okay. whatever you want to do, though. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So um, what made you um, go go for a business partner? Because I, I had a business partner. Um, I, you know, me and my business partner became business partners in 2020 because it just made sense. Like I was terrible at sales. I didn't know how to close. And then he also, um, he had a network from a company he used to work at and he, uh, they happened to be uh, transformational authors who sold a coaching program. So that just opened up a whole network. He knew how to close them. And then I was the, the person who delivered all the work and got the results. So it just made sense. So like, how did you go about, um, uh, uh, finding your business partner? Yeah, it was really, it's kind of interesting. Like, it's funny how Julian and I kind of came together. We, I was at a time where I was doing my funnel agency solopreneurship and, mm -hmm. and I was doing, you know, quite a bit of YouTube content and group posting. And, you know, you get messages all the time, cold DMs, like people that reach out to you and like, they try to be friendly, but then they always ultimately end up selling <laughs> something. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to avoid. Like, I either want to be yeah. the guy selling something or the guy not selling something. I don't right, want to be exactly. between, but. But anyway, Julian actually messaged me. I put a video on fit on YouTube and he was like, man, I just watched your YouTube video. It helped me a lot. I love, you know, your transparency. I loved how authentic you were. And, you know, I'm having this conversation with this guy. And I literally, I remember it verbatim. I went to my wife and I was like, there's this guy that messaged me and he like wants to get on a call and like talk yeah. about some things and help me with like web design. And I'm like, I'm just waiting for him to sell me something. And so... <laughs> So I get on this call with Julian, the first time I've ever talked to him. And uh -huh. Julian's a master WordPress web designer. He's mm. had his own agency for 12 years now. The dude does wow. things on WordPress that I couldn't even ever imagine. And basically at that time, I had a WordPress site. And he's like, hey, uh, you know, I'll help you like streamline this and do this. And I'm like, I'm just waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> and, and he never tried to sell me anything. Yeah. And so then he even hooked me up with um, he hooked me up with another agency who needed funnel design, who ended up, you know, using me, my services for a couple months. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, man, this is weird. Like, this is the first person I've met online who actually reached out, tried to help me and didn't sell anything to me. And I was like, that's what I'm trying to do for everybody right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I should probably get to know this guy better. And so literally just by osmosis, we, we started talking and he was at kind of a crossroads and we were like, let's just try this whole marketing thing. Like, let's just try to build this agency out and see what happens. And man, it took a lot of trial and error. Like we working with a business partner is not, you know, it's not ideal all the time. Like mm -hmm. We're completely different people. Like mm -hmm. I'm a dad. I have a family. My life revolves around my home and my family. Julian doesn't have a family. He's a traveler. He's an explorer. He climbs mountains. He does expeditions. Like we're completely different people. Mm -hmm. And so it took us, probably took us a year mm -hmm. before we like, were really able to connect. And mm -hmm. then, you know, it just, it, it kind of just, we connected the dots and we worked together and now it's pretty seamless. Like we, mm -hmm. we don't have to spend all day communicating to each other. We usually uh, have a daily uh, meeting for about 45 minutes, but other than that, like he has his tasks I have my tasks and then we do certain things together and it, it works pretty well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, um, that's kind of how me and my business partner met. It was, yeah. uh, he, he kind of bought his way in. Um, what he had, he reached out, he was like, have you taken, uh, some person's funnel design course? And I was like, no, I was waiting for him to sell me too. Right. And then, and then he was like, you took, you took this person's uh, course. I said, no, he's like, oh yeah, I was interested in getting it. And then I had made some offer where I was still like doing like profile banners. I was charging like 150 for like, this was like 20, yeah, 2020. Right. And then he was like, I want to uh, take you up on that. Um, this was his way of buying his way in. Um, and so I got on the phone, you know, we talked, he was from Baltimore. I'm from uh, Glen Burnie, which is like 20 minutes away from Baltimore. So he's from there. He's like, Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm from there, blah, blah, blah. I quoted him 150. He was like, let's do like 50 or hundred or something. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was, cause he, cause he knows he's like, I, I could get this on Fiverr. He's yeah. doing this cause he's trying to make that connection. He's smart. So, um, we made that connection. Um, I wasn't really worried about charging him 150 cause I was more worried about what could happen later on. And that's what happened. Um, 
two weeks later, I followed up with him. I was like, did your client like the design? He was like, yeah, but my uh, f- uh, grand uh, stepfather uh, or father-in-law, he um, is a Grammy na- nominated musician and he can't perform because of uh, COVID. So he's like, you got any ideas? And this is where the high income skill of offer creation comes in, where I was like, yeah, we could do some sort of online concert. And then that's when it started. Like, he was like, wow, you you launched this whole thing by yourself, the content, everything. He was like, I've been looking for uh, for a guy like you because uh, he was working with people when it wasn't working. And then since then, like we uh, we, we hit, I, I think we hit it off pretty. I mean, it was we hit it off pretty um, uh, fast. Um, he has a family too and everything. So, but I, I was, uh, more, so I didn't have a job, so it, it all worked out. Right. Um, so now I just want to talk about, uh, I, I want to talk a little bit more about YouTube cause that's what uh, Elaine, I've been exploring a lot more, um, because like back in 20, uh, 18 to 19, it was, it, I thought making money online was easy. Right. Cause I would put out a few videos and I was seeing affiliate sales come in like every day. I thought this was easy. <laughs> And then it wasn't until like I actually tried to get clients that I realized it's a lot harder. And I yes. had to really like I had to look back and be like, why do people buy? And then I started to figure out the game. So with like YouTube, what has that done for you? Like, I mean, clearly, obviously, uh, you met your business partner through it, you get course sales, but like how 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 powerful has YouTube been for you? Yeah, so it's funny that you asked that because I actually since we started our new offer, I haven't put I haven't been nearly active on YouTube. And I literally just yesterday spent a couple hours going in and you know rebranding everything out and kind of getting a plan together for youtube because i think it's really interesting when you when you get involved in like one aspect sometimes you forget about the other side so we've been in we've been immersed in short form content lately like all we've done is short form content and so youtube kind of fell by the wayside and that's exactly what we don't want to happen like we want mm-hmm. people to we want people to have these ecosystems where it's like ecosystem. You know, this free content leads you to this short form content to lead you, you know, and so we want those things to exist because you have to have like diversification. And so YouTube for me, the way that I built my YouTube channel, I had literally no experience. I had no idea what I was. I remember the first time I posted a YouTube video. I don't remember if you know, remember Neil Sarod. He had, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like I, the original. That, that's, that's how I got my, uh, he was like the original goose there, right? That's how yeah, I got that's, my, that's how I got my start and got my first client. Yeah. Yeah. So Neil was, he was very much a pioneer in, in like starting that click funnels or that you, that Facebook group the you know, whole that had name. funnel designers in it. And like, yeah. he was the first kind of one to do the course. And then at the same time, Goosen and I were kind of building our thing. Mm-hmm. And so Goosen and I launched a course at almost the exact same time. And, mm. and what happened was like, <laughs> I, I don't know if Neil's going to watch, like if Neil, watched, <laughs> Neil actually reached out to me or we had a conversation and, and he was like, man, I saw you had this course and I feel like you're stepping on my toes a little bit. And it was just like interesting kind of like, like, really? Like, there's three people in in the space right now, in the entire large space who are mm. doing this course thing. And you're like worried about me, this new guy. And that was right. actually kind of motivating for me. I was like, OK. Uh-huh. And so, so he actually got upset that I was posting in his group and he actually kicked me out of the group. Wow. And so like, that was my first experience with like, because I didn't know how Facebook groups worked. I didn't know all this stuff. And, and yeah. I was like, why would you do that? But anyway, so long story short, so I went from posting in Neil's group all mm-hmm. the time to just going to YouTube and doing my own thing. And so mm-hmm. I literally was like, okay, I know I'm not like super entertaining. I don't mm-hmm. want to be an entertainment YouTube yeah. star. So like, let's go in and I want to be the best educator in terms of like click funnels and funnel design. And so I literally just turn on my camera and I have some videos on there that are like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And it's literally just me like designing a funnel. And all of a sudden I started to get, you know, these messages and these comments and they're like, this is the only resource I found that did this and that did this. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, cool. Like, how can I take advantage of this? And so I just started linking in the description to either my courses or to a lead magnet that brought them into my courses. And so in like a six month span, I went from literally my first YouTube video to, I think, you know, my first three or $4,000 worth of course sales through basically YouTube. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And so then I had the idea of creating this CSS course that was strictly for ClickFunnels because I found the same questions kept being asked. It's like, Mm -hmm. I'm in ClickFunnels. I don't know how to do this. And it's like, I don't know how to do like a bold headline or I don't know how to do this. And so I created this 
copy and paste CSS course mm -hmm. and I put a $97 price tag on it. And every video that I did, I linked, linked out to that course. And within a year of doing that, I had $30,000 worth of course sales, literally 100% wow. 100, 100 from YouTube. I didn't do any YouTube. I didn't do Facebook ads, YouTube. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I literally I, just did I didn't YouTube do description did. to link to course. And, and so mm -hmm. YouTube was very instrumental for me in back end like course sales. I mm -hmm. never truly tried to use it for like clients. I never really like structured it in a way to get clients, mm -hmm. but through osmosis, I mean, I could go back and look, but I'd say probably six or seven of our clients that we did funnel designs for came straight from YouTube into our business. And so the, the power of YouTube is, it yeah. is exponential. Like mm -hmm. my video that I put on two years ago, which is my first video ever, still gets me leads every mm -hmm. single day into mm -hmm. my business, into our course. So mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's a lot of dynamics to it. You know, we could probably have an hour conversation on it. But, Seriously. Yeah. But it's it, the, the SEO of YouTube is so mm -hmm. powerful because of Google. And that's mm -hmm. what you have to take advantage of. Yeah. And like as an affiliate, that's where I get like pretty much all my sales from. Like I wrote a, bl a blog post in 2K18 uh, that like just blew up randomly. And that's when my like ClickFunnels affiliate commissions uh, skyrocketed. From time to time, I checked my affiliate dashboard for uh, Ty Lopez. He was the first person. He, he got me into this whole game of uh, marketing. And uh, I still get sales randomly just from right. YouTube. And uh, so someone says, Scott, your, your YouTube videos are a lightsaber. I don't know who it is, but... Uh, I guess you have, yeah, you have a fan here. So yeah, um, YouTube just uh, so so powerful, and that that's why I'm like gonna be uh, focusing a lot of my efforts. Like Goose Goosten, I mean, he's just killing the game. Like I, I respect him so much. Like from uh, creating like just great products, but also just doing super uh, great marketing. Yeah, so, it's it's amazing what you know. It's amazing what you can do with consistency, and this is the word that I always use to describe Goosten is like. The dude is just there and he's always consistent. And mm -hmm. I, like, it's it's a testament to basically anyone out there. Mm -hmm. Like, and I talked about this the other day in a different interview. I, I, I The question came in like, okay, I'm just starting. Like, how do I do X, Y, Z? How do I separate myself from the pack? Mm -hmm. And my answer is was verbatim. Like, you don't need to separate yourself from the pack in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You need to be in the pack. Like, you have oh, to, yeah. you actually have to do something to be in a conversation with people. And I think that's the part that people miss. They're always like, well, what can I do to get to the top? And it's like, mm -hmm. you're, you're number one out of yeah. 10,000 right now. You need to at least get to like 12 and then yeah. like get to like 50. And the only way that you can really do that is just be consistent. Like you mm -hmm. just have to continue to show up and have that same sort of messaging. And it's a testament to everything that Goosen's done because mm -hmm. he just continues to do the same thing. I mm -hmm. do funnels. I do funnel design. I teach you how to do it. Like that's all he's ever talked about. Mm -hmm. And that's why he has turned that kind of into a little bit of a monopoly because he's right. done so well at just talking about it every single day. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I like that you brought up the consistency thing too. Cause like for me, I I've only ever, um, it's funny. We all kind of like, I lost the course too. It, it, it didn't really perform well. Cause I just kind of launched it. Um, I got a few sales, but I just never like, kept on doing but I, but I've always still been like the marketing funnel guy like even what I teach with uh Facebook groups is more so about like a system rather than uh it's it's, it's still a marketing funnel it's just uh no like let's say website involved so right. um consistency i mean it, that's like the number one thing for everyone like um like with content marketing uh just in business in general um you can't just like let's say make one post and then expect no. your business to do well um and you can't like let's say be consistent for three months come back to the game and expect like the same eyeballs so um i, I think we all it's just one of those like basic things that we uh you hear um but it's just true it's like it's the basic stuff that gets you the results so um the, the last two things i want to talk about is just like some of the common things we talk about with entrepreneurship like morning routines and educating yourself etc cetera, etc cetera. so let, let, let's talk about morning routines so like um, do you have a morning routine? Do you just get up and get to it? Like how, how does your day, uh, day start? Man, I'm the wrong guy to talk about morning routines. Like I, yeah. so I have, like, I have a big whiteboard over here that I, I have these things called non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. And so like, I don't structure my day in a way where it's like, you know, wake up and meditate and drink a green juice. <laughs> like I, 
I have two kids that are three right. and five and I have to get them to school every day by eight o'clock. So that's like my morning routine. Like my right. kids wake me up at like six 30, you know, <laughs> struggle out of bed and then get their stuff ready. And like, you know, I say struggle out of bed. I, one thing I do really well is I, I do have good sleep and, and Goosen mm-hmm. and Pedro will joke with you about this. Like 11 o'clock at night hits, like I'm done. Like you're not right. going to get any messages for me. You're not going to get, cause I'm in bed and my phone is on silent. So right. I do have a good sleep regimen, but like in terms of morning, it's just get the kids ready for school, you know, get breakfast, get them out, you know, driving to school. Then I come back. And then once eight 30 or eight 45 hits, that's when my kind of time starts. And so I do have like a daily kind of routine that I like to use, but in terms of morning routine, it's more just get everybody ready. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, in terms of like, you know, if we're going to like daily stuff, like I think the biggest thing for, for people who like me, especially, I was never a planner or an organizer. Mm -hmm. Like I literally didn't use a calendar until like a year ago. Like I, Mm -hmm. none of that stuff was, was priority for me, but now you very much have to understand like what pieces need to be accomplished each day. Mm -hmm. and I think some people go too far into it like this 30 minutes I'm going to do this or this Mm -hmm. 30 minutes I'm going to do that like I look at it like a pie chart and Mm -hmm. it's like okay for me I know that I'm working from 8 30 to 4 every day like Mm -hmm. that's my hours to work and so I just take that and I break it up into a pie chart and I say okay I have to do emails and email follow-up like that's like Mm -hmm. a big part of my day if we have leads coming in we're responding to that so like that's a chunk of my day The other chunk is I have to make sure that I'm talking to my team about things that are going on. So I have to at least check in with them. And then Mm -hmm. the other parts are, you know, creativity, content creation, and then just like internal business management stuff. And so I can have a pie chart every day Mm -hmm. that says, okay, I have two hours dedicated to this, two hours, this, two hours, this, two hours, this. And then if I get something accomplished, like if I have content for two hours and I accomplish what I needed to accomplish in an hour, now that hour becomes free to place where I want it to. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not very strict about that. Like some days I'd rather go for a 45 minute walk mm-hmm. or some days I'm like, I'm really feeling like writing right now. So mm-hmm. I'm going to like get into Jasper and I'm going to like write a bunch of content, you know, mm-hmm. even if I don't have that planned in there. And so I think it's just understanding things that are non-negotiable that you have to do every day. Mm-hmm. And then if you do those and get those done, put that, put that energy into something that's going to actually like make you feel better. Mm -hmm. Like whether that's the gym or a meditation or writing or creating content, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. but like, don't, I think people get too serious about this stuff. It's like, just take it easy. Like Uh, if 45 minutes of your day, you spent like, you know, mindlessly scrolling through Facebook, like whatever, mm -hmm. like it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like as long as you're not doing that all day, every day, like don't get so caught up in those little things. So that's kind of, you know, my piece of advice. (laughs) Yeah. We're we're all going to die anyway. It's like, it's like, (laughs) it's like business is just a means to an end, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, but you got to keep the main thing, the main thing. Right. Um, no, I struggle like, and I don't like, I don't want to go too far into it, but like mm. I, I do my, my actually, I have a master's degree. Like I went, I did education and then my master's degree is in exercise science and nutrition. And so Mm. I still put a huge importance on like, you know, eating well and like drinking enough water and, you know, and and taking time for yourself. So I do think that becomes a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm the type of person that's prone to like ruminating things in my mind and like anxiety, like if, Mm -hmm. you know, and so I've found if I can just take a step back and Julian and I actually had this conversation yesterday, Mm -hmm. we had a problem with our email verifier software. Mm -hmm. And so we weren't able to send emails for two days. And that was stressful for me. Mm -hmm. Like that was like, because my morning routine, like after I get to work, the first Mm -hmm. two hours of work, I respond to emails, I manage our CRM, I move people in our pipeline. And so for Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, that wasn't there. And so like, I kind of went into a little bit of anxiety Mm -hmm. and I actually probably, you know, pissed Julian off a little bit. I was like, dude, like we haven't done much this week. And he's like, pump the brakes, dude. Like Mm -hmm. we've done tons, you know, it's just like, we didn't get that one thing in there. Mm -hmm. And so it's really taking a step back and being like, things are going to break. And if you make yourself anxious about them, it's only going to make things worse. And so Mm -hmm. I sometimes have to step back and be like, it's okay. Like mm-hmm. your emails will come. Everything will be okay. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was actually going to be my uh, second question, health, because um, I think that's something that's not talked about enough. Like, you can't work on your business if you're in a hospital, right? Uh-huh. And um, just everything you put in your body. Uh, like, I'm, I'm just so big on, like, food, because, like, um, the food we eat is, like, garbage. Like, it's, like, it's all processed, chemicals. Yeah. Um, people eat dead food and expect to feel alive. It's, like, that stuff really does affect you. Um, it, it, I mean, it can, it can cause so many problems. It, it, it messes with your uh, mental clarity, your your decision making, everything. So, I think health is not really something that's uh, talked about enough when it comes to entrepreneurship. No, um, I think you have to have. Once again, I like I'm a I'm a very like right brain person. I have to like have pictures in my mind, and I think about health again. You know, as like one of those pie charts, and it's mm-hmm. like did I do this today? Like Mm -hmm. if, if I don't wake up and drink 30 ounces of water, like for the Mm -hmm. first thing I do every day, I feel like absolute garbage. Mm -hmm. And so I think about that and I'm like, I'm like, man, my my wife's a gastroenterologist. And Mm -hmm. so she deals every day with people with gut problems. And like, she has patients come in that are like, I haven't had water in three weeks. All I drink is (laughs) is two, two liters of Coke every day. Oh my God. And, and she's, and you know, as a practitioner, you have to really tread lightly there. You got to kind of understand, you know, what emotional mm. things are happening, like right, what right. psychological things. And so I think nutrition can very much be a, a psychological and emotional thing too. I think if you take things too far, mm-hmm. like if you're trying to do 75 hard and you're like, I can't eat this. And like, then right, it becomes right. this thing. And then your body, you almost like become, you almost become adverse to food. And you're like, I can't eat that. And so I think finding that balance in the middle where it's like, you know, I think Alex Hermosi says this the best, like Mm -hmm. his diet philosophy is, you know, every day he's going to have X amount of water. He's Mm going to have X amount of calories, X amount of protein. And then anything else is kind of just a bonus. And his big Mm -hmm. thing is, you know, never skip dessert. Like, so he eats ice cream, he eats cake, but what he doesn't do is he doesn't just sit around all day and he doesn't fill the rest of his day with crap. Mm. Like it's, mm-hmm. he's still eating a good amount of protein, a good amount of carbs and calories, but like the excess is okay. As mm. long as you're moving and you, you're doing some things in your day where you're not just sitting at your desk all day. So, mm. yeah. So that's kind of my philosophy when it comes to, I studied too much nutrition and got too yeah. far into it and did too many fad diets to like, you know, I've done keto and like oh. all these things like, in the end, it's like moderation. It's like mm. eat okay and drink enough water and you'll probably be all right. All right. Yeah. Right. So now I want to talk about another thing, uh, books. So I think when you're at first, books are really good. Um, you know, you don't you don't know what you don't know. Um, you know, the first kind of few books I read, I think dot com secrets, expert secrets, those those really um were extremely like powerful for me it was like a, a neo in the matrix moment for me when i read those books um <laughs> books on like personal finance etc cetera, etc cetera. so how do you go about reading now because for me i'm i'm like in action mode now i feel like i don't need more information i just need to do so how do you go about like reading oh man i'm i literally am right there with you i when i started out online it was like if I wasn't reading like an hour to two hours of my day and it wasn't necessarily books, it could have been like an article or a self-help or like I spent so much time reading and yeah, you get to a point where you're like, I don't need, I don't have to have new knowledge all the time. And so if I'm going to, and I'm honestly not a big book reader. Like if I'm, I do a lot of like audio stuff. Like if I'm at the gym, I'll like listen to like an audio book and like 1.5 speed and kind of go through it quickly. But now where I'm at is like more along the lines of like philosophy guys, like Mm -hmm. Naval Ravikant, you know, guys that like speak to living your life with balance, because Mm -hmm. if all I do is read Russell Brunson, then like (laughs) I forget about, you know, I forget about, you know, being with my kids and my dog and like hanging Mm -hmm. out with my wife and like and having time emotionally for me and psychologically. Mm -hmm. And so I'm drawn to a lot of more philosophy and almost like fictional stuff now it's yeah. like it's like just immersing your mind in creative stuff every now and then instead of filling it with more knowledge and more knowledge all the time so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah re- recently i've been you know, i've been making some posts about like the universe because i've been like it's a, <laughs> it's a philosophy a lot more recently because it's just like yeah at some point it's like there's really no secret. It's like, you know, drive traffic test. It's like, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't really need more information. And, and there's more to life than business. You know, uh, we're on this, we're on this earth for a very short time. We're not just, uh, 
uh, here to just work, I guess. You know, work, work is good, but I don't think that's all we're here for. Um, there's more to experience. And then lastly, what's another thing? Uh, investing. So uh, when it comes to investing, let's say just in your business, like do you invest into um, – how do you invest into your skill set, uh, your network, and then – what was a skill set network? Let's just talk about that. How do you invest into your skill set and your network? Yeah. So, you know, I think this is another place that can give entrepreneurs anxiety. Like, I, I think it's been a very trending topic lately to talk about like your portfolio and investing. Like, mm. I'll be flat out honest with you. Like, I don't take right now, I don't take any of my income and invest in a portfolio or a stock right now. Mm. I, I have. I have a, a nest egg that, you know, over time has happened that I that I have mm. and I'm getting my businesses to a certain point where I can feel comfortable in saying, OK, I'm going to take out X amount of what I'm paying myself for my business and then Y amounts going to go into this this next phase of my life. Right. Because I feel like a lot of times we get caught up in in seeing what we can save and invest in when really. I can spend the majority of my time and focus just trying to increase our revenue inside of our business. And that's ultimately going to help me invest better down the road. Mm -hmm. And so I think as an entrepreneur, you might not be in a position to invest, you know, at all right now. Like mm -hmm. I can't take $5,000 a month and put it into crypto or put it mm -hmm. into something right now because I'd rather pay a team right now mm -hmm. inside of my business. Like, can I get another video editor? Can I get another VA that's going to help us do this thing? And so my investing right now is very much in my business, but also I have two little kids and right. like, <laughs> like right. there's a lot of like, we put X amount towards their college fund or, you mm -hmm. know, so there's a lot of other things that I think a lot of times people don't talk about. Like mm -hmm. I would love to put $10,000 into an account every month, but my, my kid's college fund, you know, and so those, those are things that I think are kind of faux pas to talk about is, mm -hmm. If you're not investing, you're like this bad person. And I'm like, right, no, right, not right, really. Right. Like, not really. <laughs> yeah, it, it only makes sense because like there's it, no um there's no point, I guess, in investing. Like, I feel like there's no point in investing peanuts into like the crypto market. Like you put maybe a few hundred dollars, five hundred, it goes to zero. Cause I mean it's, the crash is coming. Like a lot of these projects are BS, the NFTs, like you don't have to be an expert to know that. It's just how things happen, like with internet stocks, like um, everyone thought every website was going to be popular. Now we know that's not every, anyone can build a website. Yeah. Right. So like with crypto and NFTs and, you know, all that that can go down and, and you know, yeah, keep the main thing, the main thing, uh, build a business to generate cash so you can actually like you can make sense of investing. So that's how I think I'm not, you know, no, you know I, I think, that's, that's, I think that's, that's fair and accurate and exactly how I process it as well. And I, mm -hmm. I don't think we have to. Like, I think a lot of times, like people view entrepreneurship as like the means to a million dollars. And mm -hmm. I just don't think, I don't think that's a fair assessment. I think, like I said, I, I think I commented on your post. Was it your post? Like you made a comment. I think it was your post or somebody had posted, mm -hmm. but essentially like in the world right now, like 0.7% of people have a yeah. million dollars or yeah, more in yeah. their portfolio. Yeah. 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 Every post you see on Facebook yeah. or on social media is like, I did 50K this month or 100K yeah. or like making you feel guilty yeah. if you haven't made 100K. And I'm like, you understand my wife is a doctor mm. and like that's, 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 you know, she makes a little more than that. But like that's around what her yearly income is. And you're telling me as an entrepreneur, mm. I need to make that every month. Like that's just not. That's a lot. That's not a realistic thing for a lot of people. You know, mm. ultimately, eventually in my yeah, business yeah. is my goal to be at that point. Yeah. But I view I'm 35. I'm older than a lot of new entrepreneurs to start out. Mm. I view my life as I'm still young. Like. Mm. If by 40 or 45, I'm hitting a lot of the goals that I set out for myself, that's great. Like, but for now, like as long as I, you know, take care of my family and I'm able to enjoy my life and I'm able to do things I want to do, like people need to find joy in that. Mm -hmm. Like just doing it for yourself and being able to live a nice life. I mean, shit, I have, I have a house that I pay a $2,500 mortgage on, mm -hmm. like that I love, like I love my house. It's a, it's a bigger house than I ever thought I'd have in my life. Mm -hmm. Yet there's these other entrepreneurs that are like, you know, I bought this $14 million mansion. <laughs> like you're setting that as the standard. And I'm like, yeah. dude, like I enjoy my life. I have a nice life and I'm proud of that. And I think more entrepreneurs need to take pride in being able to build something that's self-sustainable for them mm -hmm. and like not view everything as $10 million, you mm -hmm. know? So mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of I don't know. We could go hours on that. Yeah, for, that. honestly, honestly, but I think when you when you look at the top, when you listen to Alex or Mosey, like when people do have real conversations about money and entrepreneurship, you'll hear them say things like "enjoy the journey." And like I, I know Alex, I, I seen Alex or Mosey make a few posts where he was just like, "You're successful when you deem yourself successful." <laughs> right. Like and uh, my friend uh, Alex, he, he was homeless and went from zero to, you know, he, he's about to be uh, he's on a run rate to do four million. He got his two comma club just making a lot of money. Right. And he's like, man, you know, the money is like it's after some point. Um, it's like it's, it's not really that important. It's like, you know, he you know, buy a fast car, you live in a condo, everything. But it's like my joy is in going and building a school for someone in a different country. So I think when people do have these real conversations, um, the thing I hear most is like, really just enjoy the journey. Um, business is just a means to an end. And um, yeah, just, you know, practice self-care like you talked about. And yeah. Yeah. yeah I just, th- I, I, you know, it's, you can, you can paint the picture however you want it in your mind. Like yeah. I was reading a really good, God, I can't even remember who it was. I think it was on Instagram, actually. Um, uh, anyway, the the post went something like, like it was a question. It was like, how awful would it be to lose your income? Mm-hmm. And like, he didn't say anything else. And he just <laughs> hated and he he got he saw the comments and it was like, yeah, I lost my income and it was horrific. And like, I couldn't even imagine. And so then the next day he posted and he's like, how awful would it be to lose not only your income, but all the sales you had saved up? And people are like, mm-hmm. oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. And he did this for like three weeks mm-hmm. until like the lead up, you know, it was like, you lost your income, you lost your sales and your your savings. And then it's like, you lost an arm and it's like, you lost mm-hmm. your mother. And then it's like, you went, you became a paraplegic. And like, he did this whole thing. And it was like, when you think something is bad, mm-hmm. there's always... 50 more things that could be way worse Mm -hmm. and so it's kind of like this perspective thing and it's like i think a lot of times we get caught up in like you know i need this or i need this and it's like man like think about how joyful your life is and like how many things you have that you know like i lost my mom when she was 42 years old i was only 16 Mm -hmm. years old she was the healthiest person in the world and all of a sudden got liver cancer and passed away Mm -hmm. and so i'm at 35 now and i think of shit like my brothers are 40 Mm -hmm. like they're two years away from what my mom was when she died and i'm like if i sit here and i just think about all these things that could be or all these bad things that are happening i'm like what's the point you know Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. enjoy it but also at the same time it's like know that there's purpose. And I think purpose is more important than enjoyment. And it's like, I'm not going to enjoy every moment of my day. Like mm-hmm. when I respond to emails and move my people in my pipeline, I'm not sitting there like, woohoo, you know, like this mm-hmm. is the best thing mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. But you have purpose. Mm-hmm. And when you have purpose in your life and that purpose drives what you do every day, you don't necessarily have to like have full pure enjoyment and dopamine rush all day. Mm-hmm. Like it's actually quite the opposite. The other things in your life become extremely more joyful if you have purpose that leads you to those joyful things. And I think mm-hmm. that is a huge lesson we need to learn in entrepreneurship is, is just do the thing with purpose and then the outcome will come. Like mm-hmm. you can't force the outcome. You can't mm-hmm. force it. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, this has been by far one of my favorite conversations. Um, this is actually one of my longest uh, episodes. And then on top of that, um, I've never seen this many people stay on the whole time. So a lot of people are also enjoying it. So that, that that's awesome, man. I'm really glad we had this um, conversation. Uh, you know, I learned a ton. I know that I know the viewers did too. And uh, yeah, th- thank you for being on the episode, man. Man, that's awesome to hear. I, I I appreciate everyone who's sorry I didn't even like mention the 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 people who are watching. But man, thanks for thanks for checking uh, it out and like thanks for listening. But guys, I think that the biggest takeaway, and I I don't want to like steal Dez's thunder here and like end the show <laughs> or anything, but like I I think when you when you approach this world of entrepreneurship, there's there's going to be a lot of things that go wrong. Like there's going to be things that are continuously breaking, continue. Like you're going to have multiple days where you just wake up and you're like, man, this sucks. Like mm-hmm. this is, you know, this is hard. But I think as you approach those and you look at it from a top down view, it's like just try to find the things that are maybe even schedule them into your day. Like I'm looking forward to this or I'm looking forward to this. And then as you go through your day, you'll find that with that purpose comes enjoyment and with enjoyment comes value in the long run. Mm-hmm. And it's just like compounding these things together. 
and, you know, doing things like this and having relationships with you. Like, I think this thing that we do right here will propel our relationship into something that, you know, we become, you know, better friends or like we have collaborations. And so mm -hmm. lean into moments like this, like we've went for an hour and 14 minutes, mm -hmm. dude, I could stay on, I'll stay on for three, you know, three hours <laughs> if we want, but like lean into these things and form relationships mm -hmm. and just continue to enjoy, enjoy being in this space of entrepreneurship because guys think about what else you could be doing. Like, mm -hmm. like even if you only made a thousand dollars this month, like at least you're not stuck working a dead end job that you absolutely hate and absolutely. your, your life you're is miserable because of it. And so like, those are the perspectives I always like to think about. So I appreciate you guys staying on and hopefully you could, you know, hopefully take away something that, that helps you on your journey as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the numbers keep going up. More people keep tuning in, but uh, yeah. Uh, you know, th thank you for that. Um, would that, uh, do you have anything to promote? No, I, you know, and I'm not a big promotion guy. Like I love marketing. <laughs> I think it's great. We have, you know, if you're interested in, in like learning more about like, content creation and content marketing, like just follow my Facebook stuff. Mm -hmm. um, our our new offer is called Snacked, S-N-A-C-K-E-D, just like a snack you eat. So snacked.io. Mm -hmm. And when you go to that page, like it's it's very transparent as to what we do. We, we essentially help you either take long form content and turn it into short form content, or we have a bespoke service where we can literally sit with you do all your new content and then help you get it out onto social media. And we're very clear in what we do. And, you know, it's, I don't have anything to necessarily sell you. If you want to learn more about the service, I'm happy to take a call with you. And that call isn't necessarily a sales call. It can be an exploration call. I can just go through your business with you. I'm more than happy to do those things because I know that, you know, I want you to find value in it before I try to sell you something. And if you don't find value in short form content, then I don't want to try to sell you anything. But if you guys want to check out that site, that's our, our newest offer that we're really promoting right now. And so um, it's we've had some really good results with some of our clients. And so if you want to become that authority in your space, short form content is a really good way to do it. And if if you don't, think that if you don't think I, if you think I'm full of crap, like just look at my Facebook profile. <laughs> I, I post a lot of short form content. You know, we, we do it on Instagram as well. And so we're definitely like doing what we're actually selling. And I think that's, that's really important in the end. So I appreciate you for sure. Awesome. So you got to know what to do if you're on YouTube, comment, subscribe, Facebook. Um, I see a lot of questions. Scott's in the group, so he'll get back to all of you. And uh, with that being said, this has been another episode of the Marketers Roundtable. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. Thanks, guys.